Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm doing the Dark Academia book tag. This book tag was started by Emmy over at Emmy Reads and it was co-created by Carolyn over at Carolyn Marie Reads. I will have both of their channels linked below. As far as Dark Academia, I must admit that I love me some Dark Academia, but I actually don't feel like I've read a lot of Dark Academia. So I don't know how I'm going to do these questions. I didn't prepare for them because I kind of think it's fun to go into them a little bit unsure. So that's where we are. And let's just get started because there's a lot of questions. Okay, so question number one. What's your favorite academia or dark book or movie? My favorite dark academia book definitely has to be the Magicians by Lef Grossman, which I think definitely is dark academia. I also think The Monstrumologist by Rick Jancy falls perfectly into this dark academia kind of genre. As far as a movie goes, I can't really think of a dark academia movie. I don't know if Kill Your Darlings counts, but if it does, then I would definitely go with Kill Your Darlings. Question number two, what dead poet would you like to have a drink with? Charles Baudelaire or Edgar Allan Poe? I love both of them. I love the way they think, I love the way they write, and they just make me happy in a very sad way. So those are the two poets I would love to have a drink with. Question number three is, what is your favorite painting or sculpture? I don't know if you guys know this, but I went to school for art history, therefore, Choosing this is actually really hard, but I always am going to go with my favorite, favorite, favorite painting, which is Autumn Rhythm or Number 30 by Jackson Pollock. I don't know how people feel about Jackson Pollock, but um, I remember the first time I saw a Jackson Pollock. We were at the museum and I was very young. I think I was about maybe... 16? No, no, I was older. I think I was 18, 18 years old. And I remember I went into this big um, room and I turned around and it was there and I had to sit down and I just started crying. And I know that for some people it's so stupid, this idea that somebody is crying over a painting, but that's how I feel when I look at paintings. I just feel such an intense connection to whoever took their time and just put all of their emotions into this piece of work and I truly felt that when I saw Autumn Rhythm and just thinking about it makes me a little bit emotional and I definitely recommend that if you can ever see a Pollock in person just like Mona Lisa Smile says just consider it. I know that for a lot of people, more classic and, and neoclassic art is like the epitome of art. But sometimes there are such gems hidden in other places. And I just, I'm, I'm gonna get emotional. I love it so much. As far as another piece of art that I really enjoy, I'm, go I'm gonna have to go with Goya, the dog. Again, when I went to the Prado Museum in Madrid and I saw this piece of work in person, I just started crying. I, I cry in museums, I'm so sorry. I, I know it must be so strange to hear, but again, I cry in museums. And when I saw the dog, I just felt this like compression in my chest that I remembered that this is what loneliness feels like. This is what it feels like to feel alone in the world. And to see this almost hard to make out little face of a dog in this like barren landscape. I just couldn't hold it. It was so incredible. It was like somebody was speaking to my soul at the moment and I just, I, I have never f felt so strongly except for the Pollock and those have to be my favorite paintings that I have ever seen. As far as my favorite sculpture, it's going to be The Piety by Michelangelo. And again, there is something so raw and real and beautiful about holding someone you love. And, I just, I, and seeing that pain etched into 
marble in a way that looks more human than at times human emotion does does something to you as a person and I just I can't talk about this with like I'm gonna cry because it's we as humans spend so much time avoiding emotion and then we see it right there unapologetically in front of you how can you not feel something at that that's crazy to me so that's my answer to question number three um uh, if you ever have the opportunity to see any of these things in the flesh please let me know and let me know what you feel about them question number four is what's your favorite architectural marvel and i'm gonna go with la sagrada familia in barcelona i oh i'm, I'm I, I feel i'm gonna get in trouble for for this but i'm not a believer in the judeo-christian god it's I'm, I'm just simply not and yet when i saw la sagrada familia i understood what people that believe in this believe in i understood why it was created i understood the magnificence of it i i just looked at it from afar and i almost didn't feel worthy of going inside of this place and there is something about it in general that these churches were made to remind you of the magnificence of God and that God watches and that you should be scared but also you should be in awe. And when I was doing my dissertation for school, I remember that one of the things I talked about was the, the word awe coming f also from awful, well, awful coming from the word awe and I could see that I could see that physically when I saw La Sagrada Familia I, I just could see how awful and awe become one thing and, and where they come from each other and where they meet where something can be so terrifying and yet so inspiring and again if you ever have the opportunity to see this in person what I would recommend is just to take a moment just take a moment and really look, forget your phone, forget anything. Just stand there and think about how, how somebody, human hands, were able to create something that is so godly, that is so above anything. It's just amazing. It's so beautiful. And it just talks about such belief believe truth to someone that it, it's amazing i love it i i think everybody should have the opportunity to see it at least once in their life question number five is very easy for me which is what shakespeare play would you like to be the lead in now you may not know this about me well no not that you may not but you definitely don't know this about me but I was an actress from the age of 5 to the age of 17. I did both television work and theater work. And no, I'm not telling you where that television work might be found. <laughs> it's nothing crazy, but anyway. I did quite a few Shakespeare plays, but because of my small stature and everything, I never got to play the lead. I did play, however, Puck and Robin in A Midsummer's Night's Dream. And that was a lot of fun, and I actually won an award for that. <laughs> But if I could play any lead character in any Shakespeare play, I would play either Hamlet or I would play Ophelia from Hamlet. I know that might sound like such a cliche thing, but I would love to play Ophelia. But I would also love to play Hamlet. I think that both characters are such interesting characters to delve into i think their pain is so real so raw so intense that i would love to just bring that to life because i feel that these negative emotions we always try to push them out like i was saying before and letting them in would be such an amazing experience to go through Number six is how many languages do you speak and which languages would you like to learn? Now, fluently, as in I could hold a pretty good conversation in those languages, I can clearly speak English. Then 
Obviamente hablo español porque mi familia es española, yo nací en Venezuela, por ende hablo español. Je peux parler français parce que je te dis en le lycée français du Venezuela depuis prof depuis 10 ans, 10 ans, oui. Uh, mais j'ai oublié beaucoup. Watashi wa Nihongo Hanashimas. Shuto, Shuto Hanashimas. And I would love to learn German and I would love to learn Italian. Question number seven is What's your favorite quote from poetry, plo, prose, plays, etc.? And I'm gonna give an answer to this, but with a movie, because here's the thing about plays or about prose or about poetry it's just that more than the words themselves it's the feeling that they give me when i read them and then when i read them again i might not have the same feeling so it's kind of difficult for me to say oh this is my favorite quote but i do have a favorite quote from a movie and that's from dead poet society and i'm sure you all know the quote but I'm gonna share it with you anyway. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. And medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. To quote from Whitman, oh me, oh life, of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, what good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? Answer, that life exists, an identity, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse, what will your verse be? Question number eight, what fictional character's death is your ideal way to go? Um, None. The ones that die old and in their beds, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I don't like to think about the favorite way I would like to die often. I don't really think that there is one character where I'm like, yep, that death, I'm totally for it, you know? So I, I don't have a favorite or like a character death that I would like to live myself. Number nine, what university or college would you love to attend? And uh, does anybody answer anything other than Cambridge or Oxford? Really? <laughs> I think these are like the dark academia universities by excellence. But I would also love to go to the University of Edinburgh and I would love to study literature there. However, if you are talking about fictional colleges or university, I would go to Brakesville University from The Magicians by Life Grossman and I would kill it and I would be so happy there. <laughs> Number 10. What is your murder weapon of choice or your murder method? Magic. Dark magic. Number 11. What mythology would you like to be a part of? Greek mythology. I literally have a Dionysus tattoo on my rib cage. And I consider myself a total Dionysus supporter. And I totally consider Dionysus to be the best god of any Parthenon. <laughs> Watch Zeus throw a lightning at me right at this moment. Number 12, if you had to do a PhD, what would it be on? Um, it, it is a dream of mine to get a PhD. However, what it would be on, um, I would think comparative literature, I would like to continue what I did for my thesis dissertation, which was talk about horror and talk about horror through psychology and analyze works of art um, that are horrific and see what that work of art is telling you about psychology, but not just of the work of art itself, but of the fears that people have that are basically place there because art and society cannot be um, unlinked. So I would love to do more work in the horror field regarding psychology. Number 13, which fictional character would you die for? None, they would all die for me. Okay, so the next bunch of questions are rapid fire and I'm gonna look over here. I, I know you've seen me looking over here because I have the questions over here. So I'm just gonna try to do them really rapid fire, not thinking about them, all right? 
So let's go. Number one, leather bound or cloth bound? Cloth bound, I'm a vegan. Number two, dog earring pages of highlighting pages? Dog earring pages all the way. Number three, sculptures or paintings? Paintings. Number four, piano or violin? Violin. Number five, films, films or theater? Films. Uh, number six, poetry or prose? Prose. Number seven, museums or bookshops? Bookshops. Wow, that was hard. Number eight, smell of books or smell of coffee tea? Smell of books. Number nine, fountain pen or typewriter? Uh, typewriter. Number 10, new or used books? Used books. And that concludes the dark academia tag. I've loved doing this. I'm pretty sure that when I edit this, I'm going to look back and think I could have answered this or I could have answered that. But it is what it is, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much to Emmy and Carolyn for coming up with this tag. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos about books, about dark academia, and about me. <laughs> Alright, I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Alright, turn this off and make sure I didn't just burn my copy of Dracula.